Full mouth extractions is what started my questioning of modern Western medicine 15 years ago when I was fresh out of vet school. In fact, when in vet school, we were taught full mouth extractions as a treatment for feline stomatitis. This was years before I ever, I ever started considering anything about holistic. I mean, I knew nothing holistic. This was just, I was strictly Western trained, but even with the Western training, I just knew in my gut or ethically or, or so, like it's a crime against nature to pull all the teeth out of the cat's mouth. So we're talking about feline stomatitis and feline gingivitis, and it can be called feline chronic gingivostomatitis, which is just chronic gingivitis and stomatitis. And if you look it up on the internet, you know, it'll come up as it's common in cats. Well, that's a really sad reflection on the state of pet and human health and wellness in modern, modern industrial society that this is common. So these words, they end in itis, stomatitis, gingivitis, or the combination word of gingivostomatitis. Itis, anything that is an itis means inflammation. So what this is, is inflammation or it's the body or the immune system's inflammatory response to something. That's why it's so bright red and gnarly. That's classic inflammation. But what is it that the body or the immune system is responding to this creating all this inflammation? Because there's something causing it. Well, all inflammation is usually due to your lifestyle or the immediate environment you surround yourself with. And that's really usually food or some other gut issue that came from food. Now, the other causes of feline stomatitis that are most common are things like Khaleesi virus, which is a virus, but again, viruses enter the body and cause problems due to food or diet or lifestyle or environmental toxins. And I have other videos in the past that you can look at that tell you a whole lot more about what viruses really are and why we get them. So it's Khaleesi virus is an option. The other big possibility is Bartonella, which is a bacterial bloodborne parasite disease infection that usually is spread by fleas. So if I have a, a shelter cat or a rescue cat or a feral cat that had a lot of fleas as a, as a youngster, as a kitten, or early in life, or at any point, they could have gotten Bartonella from the fleas. Now, the difference here is these last two things I talked about, the Khaleesi virus and the Bartonella, they tend to usually be more discreet or defined. Or they're just along the, the rims or the lining of the gums and gingiva along the teeth, you know, or maybe they are around the edge of the tongue. But true stomatitis will affect all parts of the gums and the back of the mouth and maybe some of the cheeks but usually not anything on the tongue. So there's plenty of pictures and descriptions of feline stomatitis all over the internet. We don't need to show that here, but we do need an understanding of the underlying problem that triggers the body to create this inflammation that is the stomatitis. So that all starts with the fact that cats are true carnivores. They're strict, obligate carnivores. Well, modern Western medicine's solution to stomatitis to extracting all the teeth, full mouth extractions, Hopefully you can see right away that that's a barbaric and, I don't know, criminally inhumane thing to do to a meat-eating hunter. But modern Western medicine doesn't understand the underlying cause of feline stomatitis or why it happens. And most of you watching this probably don't either. So you're doing all you can by removing the teeth, trying to stop the inflammatory response. But that is a reductionist approach, okay? Reductionism is when you take a complex problem and try to simplify it too much or blame it on the closest or most recent event, like several things happen and the most recent thing that happened right before the stomatitis must be the cause of stomatitis. No, it's the things that happen six or seven steps back that's the underlying cause. It's not the teeth causing the stomatitis. It's much more complex than that and it's in layers and multifactorial. So to the point, the vast, vast majority of this feline stomatitis and bright red painful inflammation is absolutely due to the cat's diet. So what does your cat eat? Most cats are eating dry kibble. It's full of carbohydrates. Even cats are eating canned food, which is a little bit better than dry kibble. It's still low quality meat. It has a bunch of chemicals and additives in it that are gonna cause inflammation or disruption to the immune system. That's not right for cats. Cats are hunting carnivores, meat eaters, and hunters, just like the big cats on the Serengeti. Your house cat 
should be killing mice or squirrels or small rodents or moles and voles. And just like the big cats on Serengeti, they need all the abdominal organs and bones of their prey. They would absolutely never ever eat any grains or cereal type things or any of the stuff that is dry kibble. Dry kibble is the problem. So dry kibble causes severe changes in the gut microbiome. If you don't know about the gut microbiome, look it up. It's the same for people as it is for cats and dogs. The gut microbiome is the balance of bacteria that helps us digest our food and really is probably the underlying factor that dictates everything about our health and immune system. Okay, so when you're eating raw meat, you have a certain population of bacteria that digest raw meat. When you're eating high carbohydrate, cereal type kibble, you develop a whole different type of bacteria to digest that. And that bacteria in the gut seeds and feeds and determines the bacteria all over the body. Well, the saliva in the mouth has bacteria in it. And if it's not the right bacteria because the gut's out of balance from the dry kibble, then that bacteria lays down a biofilm on the teeth. And it's that biofilm on the teeth that the immune system is reacting to, just creating all the inflammation. It's the biofilm created by the bad bacteria in the saliva that comes from the gut health. So in short, the answer you're looking for here is to truly cure stomatitis, you have to fit, fix the cat's gut microbiome. And frankly, that can be difficult because the cat may already have a lot of inflammation in its gut from a lifetime of dry kibble. So we're changing it to a, a raw food, biologically appropriate raw Raw means non-pasteurized, so it still has good, living, healthy bacteria in it. Prey model raw has organs in it. So the solution long-term is a true raw, non-pasteurized, prey model diet. But if your cat has a ton of IBD, inflammatory bowel disease from the dry kibble, the same thing that's causing the stomatitis, you can't just switch them to raw. It'll make them terribly sick. So it's, it's difficult and complex to solve this problem. The hardest part is convincing the cat to eat the clean, healthy, lean, raw food after they've become addicted to the high carbohydrate sugar kibble. So for more about this in greater detail, I have videos about Pottinger's cats. And there's also a nutrition guide on my website. And both of those will help you have a better understanding of the importance of nutrition and what I'm talking about when I say raw food because it's not meat from the grocery store. It's way more complex than that. You've got to have an understanding of what we mean by raw food. Again, you can't go to the grocery store and buy raw meat. It's, it's, it's much more complex than that, okay? Um, and in addition to the kibble, another problem is that's stirring up this inflammation, even though it's caused initially by the gut microbiome, you're making it worse with these annual or every three year artificial man-made chemical concoctions that are injected under the skin. When you inject these things under the skin, you bypass the normal immune system that's in the respiratory tract and in the gut. Every illness or disease or everything we dogs, cats interact with is supposed to enter through the mouth and the gut or the mouth and nose and the respiratory tract. That's where the immune system really targets and deals with things before they become a problem. When you inject some man-made version of those infectious diseases directly into the skin, you bypass the normal immune system entryway, and that screws up the immune system. So the immune system then reacts to more things, and you have even more inflammation in the mouth. And I think I discussed that also in some of my earlier videos about viruses. Um, so again, it's not easy. It's very difficult to get a cat to change his diet, especially if their mouth already hurts. But if you really want to help your cat keep their teeth and alleviate this problem, you absolutely have to get the diet and gut back to the way that nature intended. Thanks. If you found the information in this video useful or valuable or beneficial, then click the like button, which will tell the social media algorithms to show this video to more people who may also benefit from it. If you'd like to see more videos about a variety of veterinary health topics on my channels, you can subscribe to my Holistic Perspectives channel on YouTube, or you can follow my Veterinary Medicine 101 channel on Rumble. And if you'd like a consultation about your pet's health and wellness or current ailments or chronic disease or about the care your pet's receiving from your local regular vet, anything about veterinary medicine, whether it's holistic or not, visit my website, drmattparker.com, to learn more about how to schedule a phone consultation. Thanks.